25 long shots is one of the tougher challenges, but if you're looking to turn all 8 marks from rifles platinum as quickly as possible, then this is the video for you. Yes, this even includes that frustrating crossbow, so make sure to stick around as we go through everything that is going to make your life a whole lot easier, starting with tip number 1. The first tip we're going to talk about is game modes. Now this tip may seem obvious to so many of you, but a lot of you do actually skip over it and just end up making the challenge a lot harder than what it really needs to be. You need to be in the game mode that not only makes the challenge a bit easier, but one that suits you and your playstyle. No point grinding for hours, getting frustrated because it's taken ages, or that you hate the game mode that you're stuck in. So for that reason, I'm going to recommend two very different game modes, and you can pick which is best suited to you. The first game mode is Hardcore, but before jumping straight into Hardcore, make sure you're changing that filter to both Domination and Hardpoint, while also trying to stick to these six maps. Now the reason I picked these six maps is because you can get long shots from either spawn location, meaning you're never just running around the map wasting time trying to fight for one or two spots to get these long shots. The second game mode is Ground War. With multiple enemies running around, you'll always have a chance to pick someone off at range, especially if you find yourself a nice bit of high ground. Personally, I think Hardcore would generally be easier, but for these certain rifles, Ground War might be slightly easier. Putting on a scope and treating them like a sniper will allow you to complete this with ease. Moving on to tip number two, which is know the distance requirements. Now what I mean by this is a long shot for the marksman rifle is only 38 meters. To try stick around this as there's no need to be 60, 70 meters plus away, making ridiculous shots that are just simply not required. If you're unaware of the distance that is required, or you struggle to guess how far the distance is, then there are two sites that can help with it. These sites right here will tell you exactly how far the enemy is away, rather than you having to randomly guess. This is going to prevent that frustrating feeling of not knowing how far they're away, hitting a couple of shots and then realising you've actually not hit the distance. Moving on to my final tip, tip number three is to mount. Simple but yet very effective. Use a wall, window or even a deployable cover and this is going to minimise any recoil or idle sway. This will make it far easier to hit them shots at range, especially if multiple shots are required. So I'm going to run through the classes as quickly as possible. I don't want to waste your time too much. As we've just seen the recall pattern, the EBR is really easy to control. There's no jump, so a muzzle isn't really required. Now the barrels, there wasn't too many options here. So I've picked the one that just adds a bit of bullet velocity. Now, because we've got the freed slot from the muzzle, I've gone with a laser and that's going to add some aim and stability and aim down sight speed. If you're not a fan of the laser, then come down to the ammunition and pick the high velocity rounds here. The stock is always the heavy one, unfortunately, but that is going to bring a lot of aim and stability and the little bit of recoil control is always nice. And lastly, I've gone with the Commando foregrip. Because we don't need much recoil control, this is still going to add a few benefits without adding too much of the aim down sight speed con that something like an Edge 47 would bring. For the SPR, we're not going to add a muzzle because there's too many cons with the aim, aim down sight speed and aim and stability. It's just not needed when we only need to hit shots 38 meters away. If you're trying to hit 200 meters, then maybe, but that just isn't required here. For the barrel, we've added the one that adds damage range and bullet velocity, obviously. Again, always going to pick a laser because I like the aim and stability and aim down sight speed. For the stock, Heavy one as usual, this is going to add pure aim and stability. And then lastly, I've added the high velocity rounds. Optic, as always, is completely your choice. Red dot, four times or scope, it's just whatever suits your preference and what game mode you go into. After looking at the LMS recoil pattern, there is quite a jump, so a muzzle is required. And what we're going to do is try and focus on that gun kick control. Try and get that first bullet and the rest of the bullets as close together as possible. Now looking at the two barrels, they're a complete waste of time. They're both negative, so don't worry about that. Laser again, aim and stability and aim down sight speed. Heavy barrel as always, but unfortunately we can't tune this one. 
And lastly, I've gone for the Edge 47 grip. This is gonna keep it all nice and tight as possible without hindering that aim down sight speed as much as some of the other ones. Now the Lockwood doesn't have any recoil just like the SPR, so muzzle isn't required. We've gone with the Buffalo Barrel which is going to add damage range and bullet velocity which is exactly what we want. Laser, which I'm always going to add, aim and stability and aim down sight speed. The Optic, as always, is your choice. Now, I haven't picked a stock just because they're all rubbish for what we need, but we do have a comb here which is going to help with your aim and stability and a little bit of recoil steadiness. We've gone with the high velocity rounds here, which is going to add a bit of uh, damage range and mainly include the velocity here, so there's a lot of positives. If you're not a fan of the laser, you could add the lever so it shoots a bit quicker. Or another good option is the guard down here, which is going to add a bit of recoil steadiness and flinch resistance. Depending on what game mode you're in, I play in hardcore, so flinch resistance isn't really that important. Moving on to the SAB and the first thing I want to say is I think the barrels are bugged here because this one is showing a bit of damage loss here which shouldn't be and then if you pick this one it actually lowers your bullet velocity but it doesn't show it here so I don't understand that at all. I've gone with this one and we can add that damage range back anyway here. Next up we got the laser as always. Optic is completely your choice. The stock, always the heavy one, aim and stability and recoil control. And lastly, the high velocity rounds where we're going to get that damage range and bullet velocity. Tac M, and I build it like I do all of my tac weapons, starting with the second tread here, which is just going to limit that vertical recoil. Bit of gun kick control here. And a bit of recoil st stabilization i should say barrel is always the one that's going to add the range and the bullet velocity the stock here pure aim and stability there and then lastly we've got that edge grip which is going to help with the idle stability and recoil stabilization Moving on to the Tempest now, and we need the second tread to really limit that recoil as you saw. The big jump between the first bullet and the rest of them is quite big, so we really need to focus on that gun kick control. Next up, the barrel, the one that's going to bring the best damage range and bullet velocity. Optic is completely down to you, but always stock the heaviest for the aim and stability and recoil control. And then lastly, the Edge 47 grip we should really help pull that gun back down as much as possible. So moving on to the final one, which is by far the hardest, and this is the crossbow. The trick here is to add bolt velocity as much as possible, and you also only need around 30 to 32 meters for it to count as a long shot. So it isn't quite as far as all the others. Now with the bolt velocity here, we're going as high as we can on the accuracy and velocity. If there's less bullet drop, it's going to make your life nice and easy. We also need a bit of aim and stability because we don't want it to sway. Now an optic is very important. I don't like that little iron sight it gives you. Try and give yourself a three or four times sight like this one here, or even the uh, Slugger 3.4 is quite useful. Here we've gone pure aim and stability to stop that sway. And then lastly, for the cable, we've got bolt velocity there and a little bit of aim and idle stability down here. As always, thank you very much for watching. If it has helped you, don't forget to hit a like. And if you want to see future videos like this, then make sure you smash that sub button and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.